A few weeks ago, we talked about investing in the top three winning neighborhoods in Toronto with four, five, and six rule. How did I come up with these numbers? How do you know that they are not overpriced? Today, I'm going to share with you a formula that you can use to determine if a pre-construction project is underpriced, overpriced, or a value buy. If we know the developer's cost, then we have the knowledge to determine if the condo is overpriced. We can break down the basic building cost into three categories. Number one, land. The average land cost in Vaughan is $200 per square foot, $350 in Midtown, and $450 in downtown. It is no surprise that land in downtown is the most expensive, and it will only get even more expensive. Why? Because the city of Toronto has passed new regulations like the TO core to restrict developments in the downtown core. There are new minimum requirements on the distance between buildings so they can't be too congested. Old office, hotel, and rental buildings can only be replaced, so you can't just take them down and build new condos. More areas are marked as heritage conservation areas. What do all these mean? It is much more difficult for developers to find available sites in downtown Toronto and they will be more expensive to acquire and to build. Let's continue on with the building cost. Number two, construction. Labor, material, currency rates all contribute to the construction cost. It is $300 per square foot in both Vaughan and Midtown and $400 in downtown. Why is it more expensive in downtown? Because you need to block off some roads for construction. Imagine blocking off a road in the already super congested downtown. Also, the city of Toronto recently increased the street occupancy fee by 1,000%. That's right, 1,000%. All of these factors would translate to longer construction time, higher construction costs in downtown Toronto. Let's take a look at the ongoing construction in the GTA at the moment. There are 15 office buildings under construction in downtown Toronto alone. 271 high-rise residential buildings in different stages of construction just in the GTA. There are 26 subway stations under construction along the Atlanton LLT. Our airport is under expansion and renovation. We are struggling with labor shortage. Concrete shortage and crane shortage. All these would mean higher construction costs going forward in all the three neighborhoods. Number three, government charges. The government charges include HST, development charges, education and park levies. It is $120 for Vaughan, $180 for Midtown and Downtown. The city of Toronto continues to add infrastructure like the Ellington LLT, schools, parks, daycare, water and sewage. There is no way to pay for all these within the city's current budget, so they continue to look for development industry to fund these. The development charges for fall this year will be increased by another 25%. So, any new pre-construction project launching this fall just got more expensive. So now we got the basic building costs. As we discussed in the top three winning neighborhood video, we would only consider neighborhoods that are along the subway line. These areas will obviously be more expensive to acquire and build over the average. The condo in Vaughan are mostly entry level, while Midtown and Downtown are more on the high end level. Now we are ready for the total cost. Let's go back to our four, five, and six rule. $450,000 for a one-bedroom unit in Vaughan translates to $900 per square foot. So the developer will be making roughly $180 per square foot. I would say a profit under $200 per square foot is very reasonable for a development that takes four years to complete. If you see a pre-construction unit in Midtown today, Pricing over $1,300 per square foot, I would say it is overpriced. 
would a project be underpriced? Yes, that happens when the developers cannot foresee the increase in construction costs and government charges. What would happen then? Well, they have to cancel the project even if it is sold out because no one is going to build at a loss. Over the past 24 months, there were 6,589 units cancelled in GTA. These developers are generally new and inexperienced. That's why I would only recommend projects from reputable developers. If you need project recommendations, you can schedule a call with me at condowong.ca. Make sure you click the red subscribe button so that you won't miss any of my future videos.